Good morning and uh, dear friends, we are going to learn about the braking of DC separately excited motor. Uh, in this video, uh, earlier we have gone through the DC motor, sand motor and it's all the characteristics we have, we have gone through details. And here we are going to learn about the braking of DC separately excited motor. So, uh, DC separately excited motor when I draw, it has got a armature winding. So, armature winding with a brush and uh, the supply voltage is given on the, to the armature and uh, the back EMF generated is EB and RA is the armature resistance. Uh, the field winding is given supply separately. You can add a resistance in the field supply with another voltage source or the same voltage source B and with the resistance is RF and some ex variable resistance over here. And here we can add an extra resistance in series or else we can give a supply voltage as V. So here uh, braking can be effective in three different ways. One is a regenerative braking, one is a dynamic braking, another is a plugging. Regenerative braking has got a limitation. The limitation is that EB should be greater than the V. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, it, is a, it is simple and only thing is that EB is greater than V only when EV is greater than V only when the motor speed exceeds the electronic torque or the motor torque uh, somehow the speed exceeds it and EV will be greater than V and regenerative braking will come into picture. Here uh, just to recap we can write omega M is equals to minus RA by KB5 whole square into D plus V by KB5. Uh, this will be the same as the previous one, only the difference is uh, here it is a separately excited motor, so the speed equation is really same. So, in a right here, omega M, let me write in a very simple way, like minus of M1 into T plus K1. So, K1 is a constant and M1 is a slope. So let us uh, assume for a better clarity M1, let us say it is equals to 0 0.2 and K is, K1 is equals to 20 uh, like um, in this range. So if I draw in this range, so my expression will look like this. The slope is very, very low and the, this is the point of intersection with the y-axis will be the K1 and this is the y axis will be shown by omega m and axis is, axis is represented by a torque. So, this is electromagnetic torque. What we draw here is electromagnetic torque. So, more torque, uh, since we are talk, discussing about the braking here, so more torque, let us assume a constant low torque and having a low torque value here. The intersection of these two points decides that equilibrium speed and at this speed the motor will run. And this value of K1 is, uh, this is the value of K1 and this is the value of M1. So this is all about that uh, slope of this equation because we are going to use this uh, diagram in our further reading in the dynamic braking. So let us start with the dynamic braking. So for the dynamic braking, dynamic braking, what is the meaning of dynamic braking? Dynamic braking, what we do is that remove the supply voltage. So, I will say that V is equal to 0. Remember the supply voltage and to make the circuit complete, just add another resistance RB. So, if I just redraw this circuit here, it will look like RB is an extra resistance added with the armature. The motor is running, so you just remove the supply terminal uh, supply and add a resistance RB. All the terms will remain like that. RA and the current will be direction and this RB, uh, try to go for a variable RB, so it will be more effective, we will discuss how. So what is the value of RB to be chosen, that is also very important. So if I, uh, let me draw and explain you with the help of a diagram. Uh, so let us draw the figure and here uh, with this value, what we change here, the value of V is equal to 0 and RB is equal to, RB is added over here. So, my slope from this equation is just related to this equation. 
uh, from that equation, I can say that my new equation of omega m will be equals to minus of R a plus R b whole into t divided by divided by k b phi whole square. This will be my new equation. So the slope earlier was m one. Now the slope has been changed to m two. So the slope m one has been changed to m two, and m two is obviously greater than m one. So how we were going to implement it? So the previous uh, diagram. Let us draw the previous diagram, and then we can correlate. So initially, the slope is this. This is m one slope. The slope is m one. Uh, it's very low. So the slope is low. Intersection point is uh, intersection point is k one. So this is the value of k one. Intersection point in the y axis. This is omega m, and this side is the torque. This is electromagnetic torque. So the let us say load is there, and because of load, uh, let us change the color of the pen, and let us say this is the intersection point, and at this speed the motor is running. So this is the speed at which motor is running. So when I, I use a dynamic braking and I move the value of the v equal to zero and add R B, the slope is immediately changed. But the motor is dynamic in nature; you cannot change the speed immediately to any value. So what we are going to do is we are changing the slope of this line. So from this line, you are converting that line to another line. What is that line will be? That line will be, if I write in a simple way, the line will be omega m is equal to minus of m two into t. Now this line can be look like this. Let me change the color again. Uh, this line can look like this, uh, depending on the slope. So whatever the value of R B you have chosen. Let us say this value is R B one, and you can uh, somebody say so I will go for a higher value of R B. So if you go for a higher value of R B, your slope will uh, change to this. So uh, what is the difference in this two? So if I go for higher value, so obviously the current drawn will be the current will be less. So obviously if somebody will say R B uh, the higher value of R B will be good because the current is less. But what we will observe here is the reduce the rate at which it is reducing uh, uh, will be slower because the speed from from suppose running at 1440 rpm from here to zero, we want the braking to be more effective, not like very lethargy. We want to brake it quickly, and so let us choose a lower value of R B in such a way at this particular instant, whatever the current will be flowing. So suppose this is at x axis is stop. So at this particular instant, some current will be drawn. So this is torque, which is proportional to the current. So we will choose the value of R B such that the current will in the motor will not exceed the rated value of the current. If the current exceeds, uh, then we have to choose increase the value of R B. So if uh, my R B one is, I'm choosing with R B one because I have a rated current of I A, which is okay. So let us choose another. Uh, how to make a effective braking possible? Here also, what we observe is that it will decay. Uh, this is okay. This is not slow. So what we will do at this point? Let us say choose a point here. At this point, we find the current is at a lower value. But I know I can increase the value of the current. So what we will do? We will suddenly change go to another slope. Suddenly change to another slope. What does it mean? Suddenly change to another slope means I will change the value of resistance R B to R B. So the R B one is greater, R B two is less. So I will change to R B two. So R B two will be lesser. Why here? Because I have determined that my current will be higher value will be rated current, and the lower value will be certain current here. And let me run this motor at a rated value and just below it. So it will change again to the next equilibrium position. Again, it will come down. It will follow this slope. And here at this point, I will decide I again to change it to the change the slope, and again I will go for another slope, or uh, that is slope will be called as R B three, and again it will follow this slope, and in this way I can go on changing with another slope, possibly, and uh, R B four. R B four it will follow this slope. Now I will not go further because it is not economical. So. 
RB1 to RB4. So gradually what I am doing is I am reducing it to RB4. RB4 is even lesser. So RB4 is even lesser than RB3, RB2 and like that. So in this way, our objective is to reduce the speed that to very fast. That is how dynamic braking is effective if we change the value of RB, uh, not keep it fixed constant. So another <coughs> point of discussion is here is plugging. So plugging is again simple and here what we do is simple that replace V by minus V. That means uh, change the polarity of the supply voltage. So suppose here is plus and minus. So what you do is you reverse the polarity. Let me draw it right here. So you reverse the polarity of it. So minus and plus and uh, give it to the armature. So make sure that when you are doing it, so you are exceeding the current rating. So try to add a extra resistance over here. So here also RB is introduced with same circuit armature and uh, armature winding with EB and RF. So motor is running and suddenly you reverse the polarity with addition of an extra resistance RB. Here I will not, uh, so this way, uh, we can have a variable resistance but preferably not required because once you observe the diagram you will be clear. So if I will draw, redraw this, uh, the wave circuit here, so my slope is now equals to M, uh, let us uh, write with another pen and uh, the slope will be now omega M is equals to minus of M2 into T minus of <coughs> K1. So this will be slope. So you can see that minus of K1, minus of K1 is say, let us say K1 is here and K is here. So initially my equation was like this and this is my load top. So this is my equilibrium point. So this is your TL, this is the T, my equilibrium point is over here and the motor is running at this speed. This is the omega M, here is T. Now after the change in the value of the slope and K1, these two are the new two things entered. So what will be the new diagram? The new diagram will be the new slope will be the new slope depending on the value of RB. So we will choose the value of RB higher so that the slope will look like this. So the intersection point is minus of K. Earlier the intersection point is K. Now it is minus of K and uh, it will the slope will look like this. So this will be now the electromagnetic top. So as we know the DC motor you cannot change the speed immediately. So it will intersect at a certain point over here. So at this point, uh, when it will intersect, it will follow the path in this way and it will reach at this point. Uh, what this point is? At this point, the speed is zero, but the torque is adding some value. So here there is some torque. So we make sure that at this particular point when the speed is zero, we need to disconnect the supply. If we disconnect the supply, then, uh, then only it will stop. Otherwise, it may rotate in the reverse direction. So that is the only precaution you need to take the plugging. That is why plugging is more effective uh, to reduce the speed immediately, but with the problem that you need to make sure the value of RB to be chosen such that uh, the current should not exceed because it is a reverse torque, whatever the wear, the depend proportional to the current. If you can choose a lower value of RB, so you may lead up to if the slope will be like this, if the slope is like this, so you may lead up to some higher value of the current. Here, so that is why we make sure that the RB value is such that the current is uh, up to the rated value of the current so that it will immediately come down to the zero speed and this is more effective. However, in industrial use, dynamic braking is preferred because uh, here there is a no risk of like uh, going from the negative positive speed to the negative speed. In the plugging, there is a drawback is that you may have a negative speed. And that is all for the braking of DC separately excited motor. Uh, thank you very much.